Welcome to Heat Wave. Uh, my name is Michelle Belcher, and I'm joined with Brittany Saturn. Hello. And also joined with uh, Jairus Mitchell. Hi. And Chris, it's the Hutch Hutcherson. At the hip. So, for uh, episode 22, um, we've decided that we are going to just like get rid of our entire format, and we're going to just have a conversation about a single subject that has been hovering on our minds and everyone else's minds. Um, the we fucking Black hope. Live, like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> um, COVID. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, that plays a big part of this. Um, we're going to talk about um, the Black Lives Matter movement that's going on right now, um, the murder of George, um, and just All the protests, the protests that uh, we're both not involved in and involved in, and the um, just the ongoing, just like. <sighs> Topsy turviness of our society at the moment. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to start this conversation off with um, ha- this week has been one of the most anxiety ridden weeks of my life. And for me, my constant uh, thought is if I'm feeling this way, how do all of my black friends and neighbors feel? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they're extremely vocal, like, you know, they're they're mad. They're I, I don't want to say afraid. I, I think they're just no, fed they're up afraid with all, from, well, oh, from yeah. the people yeah, oh, yeah, that I have they've spoken been, with. They've been afraid, but like, you know, they're they're fed up with it more than anything. Like they want solidarity. Well, um, I don't know. I, I so I, I think we've all been doing a lot to kind of improve our mental health. And there's mm. there's this kind of moment where you realize that an emotional state is so deep rooted in your psyche, like be it depression, be it anxiety, be it um, any any like negative set of emotions. Like as you start to unravel it, you're like, there's a moment where you go like, holy shit, there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. Um, so honestly like maybe we should make an audio sting that's for white people talking about black people's feelings absolutely and that's i think that was the like before we even did this episode we had like uh me and Brittany especially had a conversation like should we even talk about this uh because uh my like the reason why I have not spoken out too much about it is that it has, I don't want to feel like I'm speaking for black people and it's, um, when we still aren't, we still are absolutely speaking on the perspectives of four white people who, uh, do not directly are affected by this. Um, but it also felt wrong not to acknowledge it at all. Yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah. I feel like we should at least say something because all the advice that I've read online is to like, when you see bullshit, call it out, amplify black voices, make mm-hmm. sure you're reposting, retweeting black voices and you just shut up and listen basically. So I've been seeing a lot of shut up and listen, but I've also been a lot of people just being like, please, 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 fucking say something well so let me rephrase that like say something definitely to like other white people who are being shitty um but don't don't stifle black voices yeah and don't tell them how to feel and you know all that goes along with that because Mm -hmm. like that's Mm -hmm. not helping at all listen and learn yeah yeah um yeah a lot that i've seen that you know they've 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 called on us to to call out other white people that are that have uh uh problematic viewpoints um that that's always been a thing that i've been struggling with and uh i am uh i have been uh uh, tackling that uh myself the past couple of days uh trying to do what i can to turn that around but uh i mean yeah i mean it's it's only gonna it's not going to get any better unless, you know, we, we try to do what we can too. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and it's hard with like family and it's hard, like the, the, um, and not saying that we shouldn't be doing those things. I completely agree with you, Hutch. Uh, but it's there, hard. There's a, a way to approach it. It's not exactly like, 
you know, we've we've all had those difficult conversations with a parent or uh, an aunt or an uncle who's just got like some weird problematic bullshit going on in their head. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you try to wedge into it. You try to judo their point of view um, because there's like there's a lot of anger and there's a lot of fear. And, you know, on the white people side, that fear is I I don't want to be a mean person or I don't want to call have someone call me racist. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. like. It, that's that's a reasonable thing to recognize you know um just telling someone that they're wrong is usually not enough you know it's it's I, a longer conversation it's not it's not i'm gonna say 10 words to you like hey did you know black people are humans <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah you're on and then just the problem like, oh, fix <laughs> oh shit i hadn't thought of it like that <laughs> what the fuck yeah, no, it, it it it's it's harder because you also got to figure out like what is certain people's specific racism and like is it even like there are certain people that there's a point of no return. Mhm. And should you be bothering with your energy on those people? Like, for example, today in Raleigh, uh for those who are curious, we are recording on the 31st and um uh we just had a big probably the biggest protest i've ever seen in downtown raleigh last night mm-hmm. but we actually uh, what's not really being the story that's not being told right now is there are multiple protests happening and yeah. uh the black life matters uh protest was a very peaceful one and um it got um it became a violent one thanks to police involvement uh tear gassing um uh, people sitting down uh tear gassing children and um that led to a white nationalism protest that is currently going through the city and uh leaving uh hate symbols and uh destroying, destroying property. property and uh today i believe um a white nationalist group called the proud boys are in downtown raleigh they were here yesterday too they're here today too. There's I've been I've been uh keeping an eye on that. And the act, there's active movements going through the city. It's unfortunate, but it as of a couple hours ago, they were still in the city. And um it's just the the media media is misguiding all this messaging. It's really hard to like figure out what exactly is happening. Yeah, I would say that if you're curious about a city and you want to know what's going on to it, rather than looking at a news report, I would just go to Twitter and type in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much every city has like their own little hashtag. Um, mm-hmm. and see what people are saying who are actually there on the street, and that'll give you a better understanding of what's yeah. going on. And this and is happening then, across the country. But, hold on. Hold yeah, on. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, You're fine. And then validate the what people are saying by cross-referencing other people and what they exactly. are saying, and then evaluating whether or not those people are malicious actors who are trying to steer a particular narrative by looking at their other tweets. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I would like yeah. to um, plug, if I could, um, a uh, a uh, individual that I went to school with. Uh, his name is uh, T. Greg Doucet. Um, his Twitter is at Greg underscore Doucet. Um, and he uh, is a uh, criminal defense attorney um, that has been on the front lines of of uh, black advocacy and um, you know uh, speaking out against police brutality and whatnot. He's he's been a mm-hmm. very good resource of compiling. Um, all of the police brutality uh, that has been recorded and seen. So, uh, if you if you want to look, you know, in one specific central area, like he's a he's a good resource to look at. Okay, cool. I'll put I'll make sure I put his thing up on screen. Uh, there's been quite a bit of that, and I, uh, uh, Jaris, you especially were struggling with like what to do last night. And I saw that you were putting a lot of tweets out about like how you are also offering uh, yeah. pro bono SEO work. Yeah. And me and some of my friends, colleagues, and and coworkers are um, effectively putting together like a little squad that could help support. Okay. Um, not quite sure what that's going to look like, but yeah, I'm going to start 
doing some outreach because I need more things on my plate. Yeah, um, I know how that feels. But I mean, like, it's it's difficult for me because I am six foot five. I, I have blonde hair and blue eyes. So I look, I, I am a super honky, but, you know, I was also <laughs> raised by weirdo hippies. So my inclination in any situation like this is to protest you know yeah. and in 2011 i marched a couple of times with like the occupy movement in actual new york mm-hmm. um and then i stopped because i was like this is an unfocused mess. mixed message um yeah but like i i feel as though in a lot of ways i sh- my privilege of being a fucking ogre can be put to great use uh out on the streets um you know standing nearby and looking vaguely scary and then mm-hmm. punching white supremacists that being I mean, said that, that also uh, sounds like fun <laughs> that being said i can't do that because i have a compromised immune system and there's a fucking pandemic going on so yeah. like the the reasonable thing for me to do is to find other ways of supporting and mm-hmm. like when it, whenever you talk about supporting a group or a movement or anything like that, it isn't enough to just sh- make one sign and show up. Like that's that's super important, but there's there's other things to do. You know, uh, y'all were touching on like calling out the bullshit or mm-hmm. like ensuring that the message gets heard in situations where it might not be heard by people who yeah. might not hear it um and then there's also support side stuff like Oops. if if i <laughs> if i had a rope and a bucket i would have lowered down some water or something mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Or, like, that's the retroactive narrative that I'm telling myself. Like, you know. I think you're there, also there, there putting are a lot of... other ways. Yeah, of course I'm putting pressure on myself. Like, well, that's I... that's the upbringing that I have and the, resp- like, the social responsibility that I feel. And I'm not downplaying that, but I also think that... I don't think that you obviously and we had a couple of friends who uh, touched this uh, with you uh, yesterday on social media and basically saying like no one wants you to die like no one wants you to die for the cause. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. And that's that's why I'm staying home. Like if I thought that I was supposed to die for a cause, I'd go out there. I'd get covid and I'd smear it all over whatever greasy fucks or. um (laughs) out there trying to do shit or like run a run at a police line or something like that's yeah, not yeah, yeah. that's not what i'm talking about i know well I, as your friend i just also want to try and alleviate some of your anxiety and probably you um, can't i appreciate I <laughs> that but that's not a thing that you can do i recognize that you want to feel like you're doing something and like i i love you and i appreciate that mm-hmm. but like that's that's why i'm doing other things online to try and find support and it's going to be hard like there's there's a lot of work to do to support this you know building strategies other- for how to deal with websites like prager you or groups uh that that just run on rampant misinformation like that's mm-hmm. a serious problem that misinformation i don't, I don't know if anyone problem, is period. focused on yeah yeah well there is i would say the advice i have for this is that everybody can help in some way it's just figuring out which way you can help the best and the most um whether it's actually going to protest and um handing out water or masks or um doing like donating or um calling out bullshit or like what Jairus is doing, building, you know, like the SEO websites, there's something you can do. You just have to kind of dig into it and see which one is the best fit for you and what, what will make and the what's most gonna impact. what's going to make the impact. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, for example, like I don't have the same skill set that Jairus does, but last night I kind of had a similar feeling. And one of the things I ended up doing was uh, starting like memes. a, uh, what's that? Did you make some memes? No, <laughs> but I ended up, <laughs> if anyone needs some graphic design work, let me know. <laughs> but um, no, what I ended up doing was starting a donation train on Twitter for uh, bell bonds for the Raleigh Durham area and um, just had people matching donations and going as best as I could, uh, spreading, uh, retweeting that and spreading the message that this is something that is needed because there's going to be a lot of um, uh, arrests that are not needed. Um, and they need to, they need all the financial support as much as they can. Been pointing them towards the uh, few lawyers in the area who are doing a lot of work pro bono. Um, and mostly just like, um, listening to, uh, some police scanners and police lines and warning people of like, um, arrest, uh, setups that are in the city. And, um, and it just feels weird to say that, but it does right now. It just really feels like it is, um, black lives matters versus the police versus also uh white nationalism but it feels like the police and the police and white nationalism have a lot to do together but it's just the systemic aspect of it mixed with the racism aspect aspect of it like pure just hatred of a color just is bubbling up to the point that like, I feel like COVID is really, really pushing people to the edge already. And then this on top of everything is why we're seeing a lot of people who are just like, no, fuck this. We need to do something even more so than it feels like it ever has before with the Black Lives Matters movement. And um, I'm glad to see that. I hope more gets done. I hope it continues. I hope this isn't just over the weekend. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Well, hopefully. Um but uh, that's my biggest concern right now is the is the energy and anger that we all have right now is is fueled by just an anxiety and the fact that we're all at home. And I feel like this needs to continue, not after all this emotion comes out of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm worried about that. I'm worried about all this work going um going to the point where it doesn't matter again and we just go back to the way things were yeah um but as far as like things you can do we were talking about there's a there's a lot of places online i will put some stuff in the description of this video of like um what white people can do to help um what anyone can do to help and uh we're also going to put um it, uh, we we live in the Raleigh Durham area, so obviously uh, we're very affected by anything that happens in this area. But this is uh, this is a global problem, and we're starting to see that with protests in like the UK and Germany and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, um, and a lot of people are asking um, people from other countries, like, "What are you seeing on the news about us?" And they are covering. All the protests and stuff happening okay. in other countries, which I thought was really interesting. But yeah. That's like being spread around. But yeah, I, um, I'm just kind of sick to my stomach and my motivation to do things is both like hyper defined. And I also just want to, uh, cuddle underneath a weighted blanket and just not, not think for a few days. I get that. Sometimes that's what, that's what you got to do to kind of recharge a bit. I mean, I know that's going to have to not, happen not, soon. Not everyone c can do that all the time, but yeah, you know, if you can, it's it's what you got to do to be vi uh, vigilant. Yeah. Um, I've been talking to a few of our friends who are not white, um, a variety, and um, I, I think they are mostly empathetic of everything going on because we are all, this isn't white black people versus white people. This is racist versus everyone else. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Like Black Lives Matters is not a black, just a black movement. Black people are the ones that are mostly affected by racism. And we need to all stand together against racism. And that's really what I've been trying to tell most of the white people who are really confused about this. Like, yes, the word black is in it, but that's because they're the ones being hit the hardest. But this affects white people still, too. Yeah, I mean, it affects everybody, but I don't know. I would say the main focus is still on absolutely black people not getting killed by the police oh yeah (laughs) and being able to do normal things that we take for granted every day absolutely so i don't know it's one of those things where i don't know this is just you know sorry i don't really (laughs) know where i'm going with this not saying anything at all but you could just throw some more words in there (laughs) <laughs> just like stitch what looks like a sentence together yeah that's what i felt like i'm doing no it just i mean it just fucking sucks like that's what it boils down to like this fucking sucks um and it fucking sucks for definitely like our black friends and neighbors and yeah i don't know um I'm really uh, angry by the fact that, um, and this is not a surprise, but still makes me angry that uh, news coverage of all of these protests have been very much covering just the violence and just the damage, the public property damage. I haven't really seen any news reports. I haven't. I haven't really. They keep shooting and arresting the reporters. Yeah, Yeah, well, that's one problem. Thing too. Um, but on top of that, they're also just like reporting on they being like, the police, by the way. Yes. Um, and my they being like the only one I've seen that has actually been like, hey, this is the police are the ones fucking up here has been CNN. Um, they see mostly because uh, their headquarters actually got <laughs> got looted as well Mm -hmm. so and raided as well they had like police in their uh, main lobby and like someone was throwing like giant fireworks in there but um it just the misinformation that is going on on a mass media scale is really not helping when i go talk to my like 50 year old aunt about what i'm seeing like other people report from the streets you know it's hard to argue that and i'm really pissed off about it because they're technically more um, valuable as a source of of information to them, and it's just that's extremely frustrating right now. Tucker, Tucker Carlson versus someone who's actually on the ground. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I despite working on the internet, I also want to be careful about shifting to. Uh, like ranking the supremacy of the individual on the ground like Mm -hmm. because we are all unreliable narrators we are all like we all have our biases and our flaws and you know like here in this conversation we're all speaking to things that we read on twitter as though they are facts and that's because there's no currently no reporting on it at least nothing that i can see or access um but there are malicious actors in the world Mm -hmm. there are absolutely people who specifically make their money creating mistruths or or uh sparking controversy it's very profitable to to live in that world i forget what city it was but there was a guy who was like had a fucking bow and arrow and was shooting people with bows. Like he was just shooting bows, uh, arrows into the, um, into like crowds and shit. And then a crowd rightfully so went and stopped him. And there's, you know, he had a, got a bloody eye from it. You know, he got, uh, he got a black eye and like his nose was bloody and it stopped him from shooting people with arrows. <laughs> and, uh, 
Okay, thank you. And the only like news coverage of this was a reporter talking to him about what happened. And of course, he excluded the fact that he was shooting people with arrows. Oh, he was said that they just came up and attacked yeah, he him was, or something. Yeah, so what Jairus is saying is right. And while yeah. I don't want to, I'm not saying like Twitter is better than like uh, And I'm mass not coming media. down on yeah, the yeah. opposite side of that. I'm saying just have a healthy, balanced media diet. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to have to do a bit of research to see what is truthful and what's not. You're not going to be able just to, like, it's easy as it would be just to, like, read it and be like, this is the truth. Let's move on. Mm-hmm. You can't really mm-hmm. do that anymore. You got to kind of, like, Jer- like Jairus was saying, you got to kind of cross reference and see, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. that person's profile. You can kind of tell, like, their bias and see yeah. how it goes from there. And but- if you. Click through to their profile and see any QAnon shit. Just immediately discount anything that they are thinking or feeling. Yeah. What is that? That's the weird, like, thing that spun out of 4chan. If you want a depressingly strange space of the internet to watch, just the QAnon hashtag on Twitter. And then there's another one with a lot of, like, W's and T's in it or some shit. But it's it's this like quasi conspiracy theory that uh, Donald Trump is a fucking mastermind and he's eradicating the deep state um, uh-huh. and all of the things that he's doing that look irrational and insane to everyone else in the world are actually carefully calculated methods of depriving the deep state and deep state actors. It, it's all like tied up in he's a brilliant person and not a racist piece of shit Mm. Mm. cool (laughs) yeah so i don't think uh uh, a tweet that one of our friends did uh square painter was pretty on point and he was just like if you would have told me three and a half years into a donald trump presidency that there was a giant pandemic going on and uh uh giant protests over racism and everything was happening he was like i would have believed you <laughs> yeah and, and it just like honestly i'm kind of surprised it took this long i feel long. like this like what we're living right now is something that like i feared would happen back in 2016 mm-hmm. when he was yeah. first elected and then i kind of like when nothing like super crazy happened back then i kind of forgot about it and was like okay maybe it'll be okay but now we're here again and i'm like oh fuck like the thing well, i worried about is happening was moving in a good direction <laughs> for a while like Mm -hmm. there there was a certain amount of momentum towards positive um you know and he managed to disrupt all of it and Mm -hmm. (laughs) create just a cascading failure of shitty situations yeah yeah and uh, i I had that fear mainly too because that november when it was announced that he won the kkk was like marching around everywhere like super fucking happy and i was like holy shit like this is not great like they're coming out of the woodwork now because they feel safe right and feel empowered yeah like you know there was a florida politician who is uh running for governor up against whoever is i think the current governor of florida and um my favorite thing was he was calling he didn't he never called the person he was running against racist but he was just like the racist are calling him racist so you just <laughs> <laughs> like what do you want me to say like when the KKK start marching out for a candidate it's a bad sign yeah that doesn't that doesn't bode well I'm reading a book right now it's called Rising Out of Hate that's about mm-hmm the son of the creator of stormfront like you know the nazi website yeah and sadly i'm familiar de-radicalization um and i'm like i'm trying to gleam anything out of it but it's like third person and it's all just talking like it's it's this this rhetoric of just go to college. Um, and that's, I think, a little hyperbolous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agreed. So, I, I, or like empty. Empty is what I mean. Like, hey, just take all of the white supremacists and send them to college. 
then they'll learn. That's not real because some people There's, go to college and come out racist. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, Fox News is a great example of smart people who know what they're doing and definitely went to college still being racist. Like, uh, just just about every news anchor on there. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and they're really fantastic at staffs, misinformation think about all of the people involved in that and i like i i want to be careful because everyone needs to make a living and mm -hmm. i bet it pays pretty well mm -hmm. um, but god those people some of those people must be the people working on those shows must just go home and drink heavily you know, I, it's something I think about because like, you know, for people who work at like Amazon, for example, or people who work at like, I don't know, some other evil, evil corporation. And by evil, I mean just a corporation. Um, I wonder what it feels like to be like, oh, you know, now we're in white people's wheel wheelhouse talking yeah, about exactly. corporations. <laughs> <laughs> there we go perfect but yeah um i mean it still is a giant part of the problem um yeah uh, it's it, it's been really interesting to me to see corporations actually talk speak out about black lives matter for the first time really ever though um but also i don't ever know when to trust those like type of statements yeah. yeah because it's, it's the same thing in like every june every corporation is like puts the pride rainbow month bullshit. flags on everything and calls it mm -hmm. like pride month but i can't tell are they being genuine or are they just trying to make more money mm -hmm. no they're just mm -hmm. trying to make more money like so, it's the same it's it's all the fucking same and it's just corporations virtue signaling and i mm -hmm. normally don't like using that phrase but it it's all like it's the only thing that you can refer to it as they're they're looking at their customers and saying this is the safest statement that we could make hey black yeah. people are people too yeah like and duh. maybe they shouldn't <laughs> die so i don't ever trust those types of things i mean it's, it's really interesting shit with like when right when the covid lockdown happened you got all those emails in your inbox that was yeah. like our mm -hmm. response to covid it's like fucking pinterest i don't give a shit what your yeah. response to covid the best, is the best statement i saw about the covid like messages from companies though we are in this together messages mm -hmm. is that they compare like someone on twitter compared it to a forced hug from a stepdad <laughs> is what yeah. those messages feel like to me yeah i can see that yeah, that's real good. It's like they, everyone's echoing the same like taglines. Like, how sincere does it actually feel? Mm -hmm. You know, that's actually I want to say one of my uh, biggest contributions to work was we were talking about doing something along those lines, and I was and just you like, said, "Don't." I I, I I was just like, just tell them that this is why we can't ship these certain items up out on, on time yeah don't fucking that's, that's all people care about yeah like they want this from us here's why they don't have it that's yeah. just give them that information we're not and there we're we're I not there illegitimate fathers <laughs> yeah. i had a, a, a similar conversation with my coworkers, and it was like look like there's nothing we can really say that means fuck all like the only thing people care about is are there are still going to be people to answer answer my questions. Are are these things still going to happen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that's that's what that should be. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you know, then maybe we tell our fucking employees what's up first. Yeah, there's uh, 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 there's been a lot of unfortunate. I uh, uh, it, it's just. I really do think that this it's it's an unfortunate circumstances with COVID and some unfortunate circumstances with uh, George's murder. Uh, but I think it is the perfect storm for getting activity for people to happen like that are not black people who are not generally activists. It's getting people to pay attention. It's getting people good to, year for it to happen. Yeah. Yeah, like, exactly legitimately there is an election later this year and we need to mobilize voters 
Exactly. Especially since, like, if the federal government shuts down, like, the mail-in ballot initiatives, mm-hmm. then we're going to mm-hmm. have to fucking go out to polls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, like, ooh, that was real Hank Hill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the conservative narrative is that everything is fine. So because the conservative narrative is everything is fine, conservatives aren't going to be concerned about going out to vote. Mm. That being said, anybody who has anything other than that one specific news channel like on their screen is going mm. to be concerned and potentially not go out and vote. Mm-hmm. So this, in a lot of ways, could be a way for fucking Mitch McConnell to keep doing whatever raccoon garbage horse shit he's doing. Yeah. I, you know, I'm really concerned about that. I Maybe this is something we can, like, talk to certain organizations about what we can do about it. But, you know, they're, one of the main things that is a giant problem here in North Carolina. Voter disenfranchisement! Exactly. And um, the the drastic amount of gerrymandering that is going on yeah. in our in our state still, um, um, you know, maybe organizing like buses to pick up people to go vote would be ideal. Is there a way that like that could be organized and paid for? Heat buys a bus. <laughs> I mean, I'm Brady's not against always that wanted idea. to be a trucker. <laughs> Brittany is so angry I'm right now. I'm overalls for this. <laughs> Obviously. Brittany's just like, please, please, please. I don't want to buy You know, buy that's a bus. interesting. I have a friend, an old high school friend, and her job is to go out and get people to vote. Like, she's not biased. She's not supposed to be biased on which party they're in. But mm-hmm. her job is to go out and they literally walk neighborhoods and go door to door and encourage people to go out and vote so I, I think i know who you're talking she about she might have a bit more information about that i mean okay. she lives in pennsylvania but she worked she, down here during the last she election did though. come down here during the last election she worked in the durham area for about two months mm-hmm. getting people encouraging people to go and vote um so i could reach out to her and see if there's any resources we could look into for that if you're curious i am actually. yeah that's a, that's yeah. interesting okay. I would like to be connected with that human. Yeah, she's really awesome. She is really awesome. Because prior prior to all of this shit happening, I was looking at ways to help with that exact problem through Mm -hmm. web marketing and uh, writing things and building things that would help people understand. Um, But yeah, now that's kind of sidelined as I figure out how to shut down like all of these large sites that make a disgusting amount of money just spewing bullshit and talking about Obama turning frogs gay. You know, I, I'm very interested in like um, how SEO... Joining Anonymous and shutting down things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I had that kind of skill, but um, I, I mean, I'm, you I'm can, curious. You can take some, some coding lessons. Yeah. You can buy a book. Read a book. Wanna... I just want to fuck shit up. Yeah. Um, it's true. Um, with it, with SEO, is there a way that you can affect another website's SEO? Yeah. Hmm, By, interesting. So, oh, man. Um, I know we're getting into the weeds here. Sorry. We, are, we, we can get into the weeds. Like, there are negative SEO <laughs> actions that you can take against other websites that'll get them penalized. There are... But... but Typically, when I say, yes, there are things you can do, it's um, creating content that ranks on the Google search results. Uh, SEO stands for search engine optimization. It's um, building content and websites that answer questions that people actually search for. That was for our audience. I know you all know because you've heard me (laughs) ramble about this too much. Um, Zump, I hope you I hope you grok that. Uh, you know <laughs> Thank you, our one Patreon supporter. <laughs> um, so more often than not, it's getting uh, a piece of content like a web page or a video or something along those lines in the position above that website. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you can okay. displace, um, you know, like 
uh it's basically just a ranking system so you build a piece of content that rank that talks about racist scams like how racism is a scam and how that's mm-hmm. not actually the case but you structure it in a similar way um and put it live point some links at it um and then the that that doesn't silence the conservative narrative but it lowers it or it at least provides a different viewpoint in a similar topic space okay because hmm. like oftentimes um the these conservative people are effectively creating their own conspiracy theories and nobody's responding to them so they control everything about it you know they could they could talk about uh like a, an entirely fictitious thing like I don't know if there's actually a this, but like an Oklahoma riot in 1969 where Mm -hmm. 45 white people died. Like they could claim that this is a real thing that existed and Mm -hmm. then build other content about it so that when people went to search for it, they found their stuff and there's no voice that's like, this didn't happen. This isn't a real thing that existed. Yeah, so I, I, I feel like I've only seen bits and pieces of that because obviously that's not content I'm excited about going to visit, but I've only ever seen it when it gets found by m- like mainstream media, for example, like the Pizzagate bullshit. Yeah, QAnon um, is what created the Pizzagate thing. Yeah, yeah. And um, like I'm sure now Pizzagate has plenty of other uh, bits of material that But when are, it first blew up. Yeah, when it blew up, there was nothing else yeah. for yeah. it. <clears throat> So I can see that. That's why I make myself read this stuff. That sounds... I, um, thank you, but that sounds miserable. It is. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, ultimately, I think um, right now there's not a... There's not a whole lot. This podcast is not going to do a whole lot. Besides, we want to let you guys know. Just sub if you're racist, please stop. <laughs> please stop. And anyone else, um, obviously, black people matter. Um, and we're concerned. And if you uh, have any more information, please leave that information in the comments. We're going to have lots of information in our description on this uh, episode. So definitely uh, check out those links for any details. Um, and and actually, also watch, watch uh, kill a Mike. Uh, he yes. gave a speech, I believe this morning mm-hmm. um, that was wonderful and should be understood. I, I'm going to go check that out because I like him anyways. He's yeah, always he's been great. like a really great political noise. activist. Um, uh, Jairus, uh, also, did you uh, know that still our most famous heat wave episode was Is our the conspiracy, conspiracy theory episode? Yeah. yeah, people love conspiracy theories. Maybe maybe we could uh, have a few episodes where we just <laughs> confront some of these fucking radicalized conspiracy theories. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Um, you know, put okay. some more uh, information out Balance there. Like, hey, out. this is not real. Be like, it's not real, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that could be of some use for heat wave. Can't wait to talk about what, Hutch? 5G. 5G? 5G. Oh, yeah. man. I wish that was real. There was a I great wish that tweet. 5G towers were giving you COVID. So my, my, well, yeah. No, from, well, yeah. What, uh, there was a great tweet that was like, oh, I'm sorry. When we installed the 5G towers, we set them to COVID <laughs> rather than gay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my favorite, my favorite ones have been the ones in the trans community where like, oh no, I went near a five G tower. Now I'm a woman. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, if it was only that easy. <laughs> if only. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and just like, do you guys have any like final thoughts or final statements? Uh, Black Lives Matter, um, yeah. and uh, merchandise can be replaced. Black Lives can. Yeah. Yep. Businesses have insurance. Yeah. They're yes. fine. They're, <laughs> they're they're gonna be okay. Yeah. In in Raleigh, a DGX, which is Dollar General Extreme. Uh, Whoa! What makes it smashed? extreme? <laughs> I, 
I it's thought it was express. express. It's express. <laughs> I just oh, love the okay. extreme mocker better. <laughs> a Dollar General Express got smashed and fuck it. Like one, it's a company. Like companies aren't a people. big company. We, it's a big company. Yeah, it will be it's fine. A, it will be totally okay. Mm-hmm. There, there were also like some some bars and restaurants, including the least Mexican Mexican restaurant. No, it's <laughs> it's actually pretty Mexican or South American. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm about to say like I'm like uh, I didn't know there was a Mexican scale here. I'm really interested. There is <laughs> no, a scale. Like, Taco uh, Bell is it like one in? Yeah. <laughs> and like that well, okay. place we Brittany's, ate at, Brittany's the hole in the me. wall was like on the other side <laughs> of that scale. So Brittany's with me. There are two Mexican no, I get restaurants it now. I get it now. In, in downtown Raleigh. One is kind of a, a fancier Mexican restaurant and it's really mm-hmm. fucking oh, I see. good. Um, and then there's like a an El Rodeo in downtown. Oh, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. And the fancy Mexican restaurant got smashed, but not the El Rodeo, which is directly across the street from the Dollar General Extreme. <laughs> no, okay. So it's all I, like I don't know. Like there is nowhere that I was going with that. It's all just insane. fine. I mean, honestly, I think uh, the problem right now is that like we are still connecting the dots of like, and some of it is just someone wanted to go and riot someone wanted to go loot uh some of the there's people out there that none of this applies to them as in like that's not a concern of theirs and they just want to go fuck shit up i will say that if you're a white person and you want to go to protest it's your responsibility to stay calm and not smash shit and if you see violence uh happening to a black person i believe it's every white person's responsibility to stand in between that violence and that black person the person who's inciting uh uh violence normally will stop if there's a white person in front of them and if you do so make sure you contradict everything they're saying no matter what it is um so just it's one of the most powerful things a white person can do in a protest is to get in between the violence now and if you do please 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 go prepared make sure you wear eyewear eye protection make sure you've got plenty of water for hydration and uh tear gas reasons um there's um we're gonna make sure i've got another uh bit of information about everything you need for going out um to protest and we'll put that in the description as well but there's if you do go out be prepared and when you do go if you are a white person do not be afraid to get in between someone enacting violence and black people because they are more than likely going to stop I mean, we've seen it a lot across the country just in the past couple of days. Yeah. But yeah, I just wanted to add in, like, to stay calm because... Absolutely. The, if you are... St- like, if everyone is being peaceful and you're the one trying to start shit, the police are looking for a reason to mm-hmm. start being shitty. So you don't want to give them that reason. Cool. So. Um, I just realized that today is the 99th anniversary of the Tulsa Massacre. Also called the Tulsa Genocide or uh, the Black Wall Street Massacre, which was 99 years ago in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Successful black businesses were just murdered. Wow. Have you seen um, Watchmen? Yes. So that's the event that is (laughs) featured in the beginning of Watchmen. Yes. Uh, And that was a real thing that happened. Mm hmm. Yay! History's terrifying. It is. Sure is. This is off topic, but I got on Netflix for the first time in a while, um, and I decided to watch the little mini series about Waco, and that was terrible. <laughs> bad timing. Yeah, very bad timing, but also very good if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, it didn't go down like how I thought it went down. If like the if this show is presented in such a way, it was based off of a book that someone wrote who was a survivor from that incident. And if it went down the way this eyewitness claims it did, it was some fucking bullshit. So, but check it out. It's on Netflix. Mm. Um, 
And I didn't want to call out the Tulsa massacre without calling out the Wilmington insurrection of 1898 Mm -hmm. here in North Carolina. uh, The city of Wilmington was a hub of black businesses. And uh, if I remember right, they had the first black mayor. Um, Yes. But then a group called the Fusionists, which were the Klan in red shirts red coats instead of uh clan robes uh killed everyone and briefly i believe seceded from america hold on <laughs> let me double check that yeah i um basically I, undid I, all of the black wealth since the civil war yeah yeah it's uh it's extremely unfortunate um but yeah those are definitely two things to talk about um yeah i don't really know how to bounce off of that but it's it's extremely unfortunate um just know if you are watching this and if you are are feeling equally um upset and you feel like you need to do something there is something you can do no matter how small it is um there's something you can do Um, even if it's just like saying black lives matter on your social feed or just talking to, um, your family or whatnot, just start doing something and don't let, don't let these racist fuckers win. And with that, um, I think next week we'll go back to our regular format. We're going to try. Uh, I, I really debated whether we should be uh, a, a distraction from all this or if we needed to talk about it. And just ultimately, I think we all agreed that this is something we needed to talk about. And like, I, I think that's valuable guidance. Talk to people, understand what they think and what they feel. Mm-hmm. Um, come at this from from a reasoned place like or and i don't mean that in like the fucking ben shapiro libertarian kind of just yeah, yeah, logic because yeah. that's not real like he's Fuck uh, him. Uh, he's a malicious shithead um yeah. i mean like we should understand and interrogate our beliefs and be solid in our beliefs and our understandings so that it is difficult to um <clears throat> counteract or countermand any of the things that we're saying and also understanding how other people think will help you understand how to change their perspective exactly yep smash well, like and with, subscribe or whatever something like that um guys we'll be back to a normal uh episode next week um we're going to try and find some things to talk about that does not mean we will not be talking about black lives matter but we're going to try and go back to a segmented uh, episode, uh, episode next week. But um, until then, stay alive, keep fighting for justice, and um, Black Lives Matter.